Candelaska Uranium Limited is a Vancouver-based mineral exploration company. I'm joined here by Peter Dessler, who's the CEO of the company. Peter, great to have you here today. Remy, it's great uh, to be here at the Sprott Conference. Uh, we've got a good position on the floor and we've been talking to a lot of people about uh, uranium and nickel. So it's, it's, yes, it's exciting times. Yes, it is indeed an exciting time to be talking about this. So I want to start out by talking about your company. Now, you recently announced the uh, closing of a private placement. So can you tell me about how the proceeds from this financing will advance your project in Manitoba? Well, that's primarily why we did it. We went to get some money to take the project to the next stage. We have a very high grade, high tenor uh, discovery near the uh, Manor Bridge mine. Uh, this discovery was made a number of years ago, but we were able to assemble it and stake claims over it. And so we have a nickel target that's about 400 meters long. Some very, very high nickel numbers, you know, uh, 5 to 10, up to 20 percent nickel in drill holes. And uh, we recognize that this is in the nose of a fold, but we think there are some other targets nearby. So we went to the market to get some money uh, just to get to the next stage on this. Ultimately, we're looking to find a partner to come and take this on. We're, we're prospect generators. Uh, this is one of three nickel projects we have in the Thompson Nickel Belt. Uh, the, that belt is hugely strategic for us because it's in our backyard. It's the fifth largest nickel belt in the world. Uh, Thompson is a very high grade, very large nickel deposit uh, and about 5% of the nickel uh, grade is, uh, contains cobalt. So if you want a really large cobalt uh, credit, uh, you can go to this belt. So the money uh, is doing a compilation uh, program. Uh, we've done a 3D modeling. Uh, we will probably look to do some drilling in January. Uh, but we're going to fly an airborne survey as soon as we can to follow the trace of this target a bit further. And Peter, I do want to ask you about uh, the announcement that you made in PDAC. So here we are in July at the Sprott Natural Resources Conference and a couple months ago you also announced uh, new claims to the nickel cobalt project uh, in that uh, Thompson nickel belt. So can you tell us if you have any updates to that as well as your other ongoing targets? Well, uh, since January we've been marketing those projects, actively uh, introducing them to new people. Uh, both the projects have got drill holes on them already. Uh, the strong project is, uh, uh, is uh, right close to the smelter area. Um, it's got 29 targets that were identified by an airborne survey in 2007. Now bear in mind the last work was done on that property in 2005, so none of these targets have been drilled. When we look at that, there are six very high priority targets and that's what we've gone to people to say, we own 100% of this project, uh, we're interested in financing the exploration on it, uh, are you interested in becoming our partner? And we've done that numerous times in the Athabasca Basin and Uranium. Uh, we've got some copper projects and these, now these three nickel projects. We intend to continue doing that. And I'm sure you've been talking to plenty of investors here at the conference. You just uh, mentioned the Athabasca Basin. And you have been known to uh, uh, have the title of Saudi Arabia of Uranium for the Basin region. So for people in the viewing audience who are not familiar with the company and what this title means, could you explain that? Well, you know what, I've got to give credit to my old partner, Emil Fung, for coming back to me and pointing out that Saudi Arabia in the 1920s was the place to be if you wanted to be in oil. And uh, the Athabasca Basin is the place where you want to be if you want to be in high grade, a very strategic uranium deposits. So back in 2004, that's how that name came around, uh, the Athabasca, the Saudi Arabia of uranium. Uh, we like it because, again, it's in our backyard but those uranium deposits in the Athabasca are unique and I use that word very carefully. They are 100 times richer than the average uranium mine. They are generally 50 to 100 times bigger than the average uranium mine. You're not looking at grades of 0.1% uh, uranium, you're looking at grades of 5 to 10 to 25% uranium. You're not looking at 10 or 20 million pound deposits, you're looking at 200 million pound and larger deposits. So strategically, sitting there in the middle of Canada, if I want to supply nuclear power plants with uh, uranium for the next 30, 40 or 50 years, there's a guarantee for you. And so uh, we set off in 2004 to find more of those. 
Uh, we had two and a half million acres of land that uh, was strategically located. And uh, since then, uh, Mitsubishi Corporation through MC Resources uh, came and gave us uh, $16 million to further one of the properties. Uh, Cameco is working on that now. Uh, Korean Resources Corporation came in and gave us $20 million for a second property. Uh, and we've got that project looking for a partner now. So uh, we know what we're looking for. We do believe that more deposits exist. And when we look at a company like NextGen, which has been very successful in uranium in the basin, even in the down market, they've created a billion dollars worth of wealth in four years. So uh, I think Catalask is poised to do that. Uh, I'll be talking tomorrow about that. And, and I think we've, with 31 million shares and only a $10 million market cap, with well over $80 million of the ground, I think we've got lots of upside as the uranium market moves. And uh, the, the icing on the cake is a few of these nickel projects. Well, Peter, I think it's important to make that distinction when you're talking about uranium and what you're finding. Your background as a geologist is definitely helpful for that. And I think investors or potential investors should know that uh, who are in the audience. So you've been through uh, many cycles when it comes to the metals market. Given where uranium is right now, do you expect to see any changes on the horizon? Well, I think we just saw a very strategic change with uh, the Yellow Cake Fund buying 10% of the world's uranium. That gentleman just raised $200 million. I like to say he woke up on January 1st and dreamed up an idea, but six months later he had put $200 million into buying uranium and he bought it at a 10% discount. So he's got a $20 million premium already for his shareholders. Uh, I think over the next two years, you're going to see more companies, more people doing that. And we, because we saw that in 2007, where the price of uranium skyrocketed from $50 to $140 a pound because of speculators. It wasn't the end users, it was the speculators. I think a long term uh, price for uranium should be in the range of $65 to $85 a pound. But I think we may see it overshoot that as people go in and take it supply off the market. Taking 10% supply off the market is strategic. Cameco has just shut down 10% of the supply, and the Kazakhs have done the same. So there are big changes happening in the market. Uh, and in the space of a month or two, I think you could see a doubling of the prices. Which month will it start? I'm not quite sure. But I'm very optimistic it's going to happen, and, and Canalask is ready for that. Uh, we, we've lost a lot of value since Fukushima. We've only issued 7 million shares since that date. Uh, can, can, the company is uh, well supported by management. We have 11% of the company, 17% fully diluted. We're working for our shareholders. We want to make a gain in the uranium space. We want to make a discovery in the uranium space. And then we have the ability to, to foster out other companies in the nickel and cobalt space to dividend things to our shareholders. Um, I'm excited about the opportunities in front of us. There's a cycle here, I'm going to ride it. Well, Peter, last but not least, before I let you go, uh, we don't have a crystal ball, but we can only take a look at uh, what we've seen in the past and make predictions based on what we're seeing currently. Uh, you did give us your outlook for uranium, so very quickly, could you highlight your expectations for nickel as well as cobalt? Nickel is the best performing metal out there this year, up 75%. You know, I think that you've got to look at the market in, for nickel in two different segments. You've got to look at the, the uh, sulfide nickel and the uh, lateritic nickel, the oxide nickel. Uh, they both come from different areas, uh, but if you want to have a high quality nickel for batteries, you want sulfide nickel deposits. Thompson is the fifth largest belt in the world like that. It's in our backyard. We have uh, probably assembled over $15 million worth of work on our properties and it hasn't cost us more than the staking cost. I'm very excited about where that will lead us in the next couple of years, as people want more batteries. Nickel is great, um, and uranium is great. Okay, Peter, well, thank you so much for joining me, and thanks for all your insights as well as your outlook. Thanks, Remy, it's great to be here, and uh, gotta thank Rick for putting on the conference.